if you were hunted by a sadistic monster that no one else can see, what would you do? This creature won't stop until you're dead, so I'm going to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to beat the killer creepypasta in Grim Cuddy. This girl is going to regret having parents. Asha here is checking the views on her latest YouTube video, and she's not happy. It hasn't performed well, but before she can do anything, her mom tells her to come downstairs. Joining the rest of her family, the dad shows them a picture of a creature called the Grim Cut and explains it's part of an online challenge where it forces kids to hurt people. There are already rumors of children who have even stabbed their parents, but Asha reassures them they'll never do a Grim Cuddy challenge. Returning to her room, the girl discovers that some of her classmates have also been told about the Grim Cuddy, and she gets a message from her friend Emily, whose parents have also warned her about the creature. Asha thinks it's just a dumb trend, but has no idea that the Grim Cuddy has already selected her as its next target. Later, the girl is making some toast for herself when she hears the door open and looks up, shocked to see that the Grim Cuddy has entered her house. She screams in terror. Terror, and her dad comes rushing downstairs as she warns him that a stranger broke into their house. But when he takes a look, the man only finds an open door. The police are called to the house, and Asha describes the person she saw. But then the man shows them a picture of the Grim Cuddy, asking if the suspect looked like this. Reluctantly, the girl confirms he did, and the policeman reveals something shocking. Tons of people have reported seeing the creature all night, and with no other leads, he tells her to leave the room so he can talk to her parents in private. The girl listens into their conversation, and over hears the policeman accusing her of lying about seeing the monster. He thinks it might be part of the Grim Cuddy challenge, and Asha quickly goes back to her room, trying to text her friend about what just happened, when her dad suddenly walks inside. The man takes her phone and laptop away, insisting this is for her own protection, and she tries to stop him, but he has no idea that he's already falling for the monster's trap. Okay, this is immediately horrifying. Asha here has just seen the Grim Cuddy walk into the house, but the worst part about it is that nobody believes her. The police have convinced the parents that she's lying, and now they're so paranoid of her behavior that they've taken away every device she owns. This is a huge problem, because it means if this creature ever returns, nobody will be willing to help us, and we can't look up any information about this thing to plan ahead. We need to figure out how to survive if this monster returns, and the best way to do this is to consider how it selects its targets. First of all, it's important to point out that Asha here didn't even know about the Grim Cuddy until her parents showed it to her. In fact, some of the other students posted on social media that they first heard about the Grim Cuddy challenge from their parents. We also know that the police officer said several other kids had called the cops that night, claiming to see this creature stalking them. Putting this information together, it doesn't take a detective to figure out that if every kid who claimed to see the Grim Cuddy had also been shown the picture by their parents, then this one simple action might somehow be turning the kids into its target. This makes things difficult, because if we can't rely on our parents to trust us, and we don't have technology to research the monster, then we'll have very little options to protect ourselves. Now the good news is, we've already seen the creature with our own eyes, and this actually gives us a lot of information we can use against it. First of all, the Grim Cuddy physically opened the door, and since the dad had to close it, this confirms the objective reality that this creature is not an apparition. It also has a head that's way too small to be human, and considering that it's appearing to so many kids in such a short amount of time, we can deduce that this creature is supernatural, not human. This might actually be great news, because most supernatural entities have to be summoned a specific way, and require certain catalysts to allow them to operate in the physical world. If we can figure out the rules that this creature is bound to, then we'll have a chance to defeat it, and that needs to be our priority until this thing stops haunting us. Now, as terrifying as this all is, I can't help but consider that this could also be extremely rewarding if we play it the right way. Asha here is a YouTuber who's desperate trying to go viral, and if there is a way she could capitalize off of this monster, then it completely changes how we think about the situation. A real-life creepypasta who leaves the internet to haunt kids would give us the most viral YouTube channel on the planet, and even Mr. Beast would have to step up his game to compete with us. That's why instead of panicking, we should figure out the monster's rules that constrain it, because it's going to give us a lot more options than we even realize. The next morning, the girl gets out of bed and finds the rest of her family have gathered for another meeting. Sitting down with them, she's told that from now on, they'll be locking all of their electronic devices inside this metal box for the entire week. It's to help them detox for their mental health, and the little brother Cameron volunteers to put in his belongings first before leaving. It's Asha's turn next, but she asks her parents if this has anything to do with the Grim Cuddy challenge. The dad insists they're just trying to help her reclaim her 
focus game, and the mom backs him up, saying this is to cut her screen time in the meantime. It's clear they think she's doing the challenge, and Asha tries to argue, but her father demands she put her phone in the box. Acting quickly, the girl grabs the device and fights with her dad to take it back, when suddenly the Grim Cuddy appears at her feet. Terrified, the girl backs away, and it disappears moments later. She doesn't understand what's going on, but Asha is determined to find out, and will do anything it takes to kill this monster. That night, she goes to her brother's room and demands he let her use his secret backup laptop. Reluctantly, the kid pulls out the device and uses it to log into Twitter, asking if anyone else still has their phone. But that's when the internet cuts out. The siblings realize that their parents must have disconnected the router, and the girl comes up with a plan to get help. Heading back to the kitchen, she walks towards the steel box on the counter, but discovers it's locked. Asha quickly grabs a knife and uses it to break the latches, opening the container so she can take back her phone. Checking the notifications, the girl sees that another student, Cassidy, has sent a message and suddenly starts calling her. Asha answers, and the other girl explains that all their friends have had their phones taken. She suggests they go to the cops to get help, but Asha reveals she's already talked to them, and they didn't believe her. Suddenly, the girl hears her parents leave their room, and she quickly closes the box as fast as she can, and she walks out of the kitchen before her parents catch her. She heads to the bathroom and puts the knife down, but the girl can hear her parents quickly approaching. Asha moves outside as another student is added to the chat and she tells them that there have been other victims of the Grim Cuddy, but something doesn't add up. Tons of people should have been talking about this challenge before it got popular, but they haven't. Their parents should never have been able to find out about it, and there's clearly more to this than they realize. Her friends suggest they all attend school tomorrow so they can talk about this in person and figure out what to do. But just as Asha is about to go back inside the house, the girl hears something behind her. That's when the Grim Cuddy stands up, and the girl runs through the building, terrified of being its next victim. She tries to hide in the bathroom, but the monster grabs her hand and starts slicing her arm. Okay, this should give you nightmares. Somehow the Grim Cuddy Challenge has turned every parent against their children, and now all the students are isolated in lockdown with their technology confiscated. This is exactly what the monster was hoping for, and it means we have no choice but to confront this thing by ourselves. Now, the good news is that once he appears, it seems that he still needs to chase us down, and this is a huge advantage for us. The creature can't use his supernatural powers to teleport into any room it wants. This means our best chance of survival is to make sure we're never out in the open, and always have multiple exits if we need to escape him. The physical world is clearly an obstacle to this creature once he's appeared, and we need to use this against him as much as humanly possible. It's also fair to assume that if he can't teleport through a door, that he can probably also be injured by something as well. And that's why we need to make sure we always have a weapon on hand in case he shows up. Unfortunately, running away is not going to be a sustainable strategy if it keeps showing up, and it means we need to figure out how to get the parents on our side. What most kids don't realize is that the key to dealing with adults is to let them feel like they're in control. Acting defiantly only encourages them to reinforce their authority, but if we're compliant, then we might be able to take advantage of their parenting instincts. With this in mind, the best way to handle this situation is by gaslighting them into thinking that your sibling requires more of their attention than you do. They'll need someone to worry about, and if we can shift their focus onto someone else in the family, then they'll have less time to focus on us. Now, it's important to point out that these parents are reacting so strongly for two reasons. The first is that it's clearly causing harm to their children, but the second reason is because they don't understand the younger generation. Memes, ASMR, and creepypasta are not familiar to them, and people naturally fear what they don't understand. The good news is that this is a great opportunity to turn their fear against them. If it were me, I would lie that I knew about the Grim Cuddy, but casually explain that it's not a challenge. It was invented as a creepypasta, which are designed for a much younger audience like her brother, and then show them our ASMR videos, pointing out how different my interests are from this kind of content. To a parent who knows nothing about the online world, it might be convincing enough for them to shift their parental focus away from us, and the more generational references we can use in our explanation, the more they'll have no choice but to accept our reasoning. As long as they're focused on our brother, we'll have more opportunities to secretly use our phone or laptop to try contacting our friends and find out more about the Grim Cuddy. Asha is terrified, but she quickly takes the knife she hid earlier and attacks the creature. The monster backs away, and the girl tries to hold the door shut, but that's when her parents come barging inside to calm their daughter down. The mom takes the knife out of her hand and covers the girl's wound, but she's shocked they never saw the Grim Cuddy. Later, the mother suggests they take her to the hospital, and Asha begs them to let her go to school tomorrow, but her dad won't won't allow it until she tells them what's really going on. They clearly think her daughter is doing the Grim Cutting Challenge, but she reassures them that her injuries were just an accident 
and is desperate to feel normal again. It's enough to convince her parents to trust her for now, and the dad reluctantly agrees. The next morning, the principal makes an announcement to the few students that have come and assures them they're safe to share what they know about the Grim Cutting Challenge. But one of the kids interrupts. He insists there is no challenge, and people are falling victim to mass hysteria as teachers rush in to quickly move him out of the auditorium. None of the adults believe the boy, and that's when Cassidy throws a message over to Asha, insisting they need to get out of here. Meeting in the restroom, the girl reveals that her parents have locked away her phone in a detox box to cut down on Cassidy's screen time in the meantime, and that takes Asha by surprise. Those were the exact words her parents used, and it's like they were quoting something. It's too weird to be a coincidence, and Asha insists they need to find a way to search up this phrase. That way, they can find out more about the Grim Cuddy, but there's a problem. Everyone has had their phones confiscated, and the school computers are all disconnected from the internet, but Cassidy knows exactly where to go. Later that day, they head to a rich kid's house, and the girl explains his parents are barely ever home. That means his devices haven't been locked away yet, and the students walk inside to find a huge house party. Searching for the rich kid, they find him in the kitchen, and Cassidy asks if they can use his computer. Realizing they don't have devices, he decides to help them out, and they make their way through the house when another student takes out a selfie cam. He orders everyone to pretend they're being murdered by the Grim Cuddy and starts recording them. No one here is taking it seriously, and they don't know that the monster will soon be crashing their party. The girls are taken upstairs, where the boy lets them use his laptop, and they look for information about the detox box, finding out it was created by a woman named Melinda James. She's a mommy blogger who frequently makes posts about how technology is bad for children, and the girls find an article on the Grim Cuddy Challenge. Hoping to find out more, Asha clicks on the link, but she discovers that the post has been removed. It's clear the woman is covering up her involvement, and Cassidy remembers there was a kid who supposedly stabbed his mom during the challenge. This might be the woman who got attacked, and Asha tries to look for her address, with no idea of just how dangerous Melinda can be. Okay, this is getting interesting. The information about Grim Cuddy had to begin somewhere, and this mommy blogger might know exactly what we need to figure out how to defeat it. The problem is that given what her website is about, it's clear she's going to be just like all the other parents, and it means we'll have to handle this with extreme caution. Now what's interesting is that for some reason, nobody can see the Grim Cuddy except for the person that it's hunting, even if it's right there in front of you. This makes the creature even more terrifying, because surrounding ourselves with others clearly won't be enough to stop him from attacking us. This monster is completely protected because nobody believes he exists, but if we are thinking strategically, this might actually be something we can use against him. Since we already know that this creature can interact with physical objects, if I was being attacked and moments away from death, I would strongly consider trying to jump on him. This might seem counterintuitive, because he's clearly holding a knife, and there's a very good chance that we'll get injured, but the benefit is that when the parents arrive, it will appear to them as if we're floating in the air. This would be such a shocking image, it would be impossible to fake, and they would have no choice but to believe that a supernatural creature is trying to kill us. The biggest disadvantage here is that we have to face him alone, so anything we can do to get everyone to help us fight the thing off is going to make a difference. Now, this only makes sense if we have no other choice but to confront it, but if we were thinking a little further ahead, there might actually be a way to distract the creature away from us. So far, we know that this thing has been haunting several different kids across town, and even though it can disappear whenever it wants, the creature is a singular entity. It doesn't have the ability to be in multiple places at once, and that's why if it were me, I would try to coordinate with this rich kid, telling the boy that I could destroy his enemies, but in return, all I need is to borrow his phone for the day. It's very likely someone this rich has more than one of them lying around, and if he lets us use it, we can ask for a list of the people he hates the most, as well as their parents. Then, if we find ourselves running from the monster again, we can send them all a group message with the image of the Grim Cut, telling them they've been selected for the challenge. If any of these students still have their phones with them, then their parents will know that they receive the message, and it might be enough to trigger the creature to haunt its new victims, leaving us safe from harm. Cassidy decides to leave, and suggests they go to the woman's house tomorrow as a group. It's their best chance to put an end to all of this, but they have no idea that the Grim Cuddy is already on its way. Later that night, Asha tries looking for details on the blogger, but there are no results anywhere. With no other options left, she calls her brother for help, and he tells the girl that their parents just left the house looking for her. They'll be arriving here any time now, and she asks him if the internet is working again, but the kid has bad news. The Wi-Fi is being monitored, and any online activity will alert their parents that he's using the internet. 
desperate, the girl asks him to find the address of the blogger, but that's when she suddenly hears a strange noise outside and looks through the window to see the Grim Cuddy marching towards the house. It's coming to kill her, and the girl runs back to the computer, begging her brother to help. The kid agrees, and Asha quickly makes a post on Twitter, leaking the blogger's name to the internet. The girl runs downstairs as fast as she can, but just as she's about to leave, she finds the monster waiting outside on the doorstep. Terrified, Asha heads back inside looking for another way out, but the Grim Cuddy is quickly catching up to her. She backs away and asks this party goer to take a look at the creature, but the girl has no idea what she's talking about. For some reason, no one else can see the monster, and Asha goes to the kitchen, but it catches her at the last second. He starts attacking the student and slices up her leg just as she grabs a kitchen knife. Swinging the weapon at the Grim Cuddy, she scares off the creature and follows it into the hallway, but it's disappeared. Freaked out, the girl turns around and is horrified as she realizes realizes the monster won't stop haunting her. That's when her parents enter the house and suddenly hear their daughter screaming for help. They immediately run through the building and are shocked to see Asha clutching her bleeding wound. The dad rushes over, helping her calm down, but they don't know that the Grim Cuddy has been attacking her. Everyone thinks she's another victim of the deadly internet challenge, but the parents of this community will soon regret not listening to their children. Okay, this thing is terrifying. It just marched through a house party to hunt us down, and nobody even knew it was there. We clearly can't use the crowd to our advantage, but if we had been thinking ahead, there was one way we could have completely turned this situation into an advantage. Right now, technology is a rare and valuable resource, because from what we know, the way to summon the Grim Cuddy is by seeing his image on a digital device. This has got to be the easiest way to summon a demon that I've ever heard of, and it's all the more reason we need to get our technology back so that we have a method to control control this thing. Now earlier, this group was mocking the Grim Cuddy challenge in a video, but nobody realized this was the perfect method of blackmail. At this point, we should expect that the Grim Cuddy will be coming back to attack us, and that's why if it were me, I would have planned ahead and asked this guy to send us the video so we can pull the prank. Since this is a reckless party atmosphere, he'll likely be willing to send us the file, and that way, we can use the video against everyone at the party and upload it to social media. By uploading both this video as well as the Grim Cuddy image and tagging the parents of everyone in this room, there's a very good chance the Grim Cuddy will start haunting them instead. This would be great news for us because it means when the monster suddenly shows up, everyone else will be able to see him too. And that means we wouldn't have to face the creature alone. This is the best opportunity we have to collectively fight back against this creature because there aren't enough adults here to control us. The more everyone stays isolated at home under the supervision of their parents, the more likely we are to get attacked. It's also not possible to do this at school because they've removed all access to the internet and won't allow any of the kids to use technology whatsoever. This is the only place that has both enough kids gathered without supervision and has access to social media, and it means we have to go on the offensive and summon it here so we can all work together to take it down. Even if the others are too afraid to help fight it off, it's still going to work in our favor, because if we end up being chased by the monster again, we can automatically post the images, and when everyone gets the notification, the Grim Cuddy will be lured away from us to chase down all of its new targets in the room. As long as we keep feeding this creepypasta to parents and their children, across town, we can use it as a weapon to solve our problems and keep the creature from hurting us. Later, Asha tries to convince her parents that the monster did this to her, but they don't believe the girl. And that's when the dad suddenly notices their home Wi-Fi is being used. He asks his daughter what's going on, and she tells him that her brother is helping her do research. It's upsetting and she tries to take the blame, but her parents are furious with the children. The kids have broken their trust, and the family hurries back home with no idea the brother is already in danger. Meanwhile, Cameron here manages to find the address of the blogger and tries to call his sister to let her know, but that's when he spots the Grim Cuddy on his webcam. Looking over his shoulder, he's surprised to find nothing behind him, but when he checks the computer again, the monster suddenly rushes forward. Later, the rest of the family arrives, and they're shocked to find him lying unconscious on the floor. The girl is horrified, realizing that he was attacked by the Grim Cuddy, and she blacks out. The next morning, she wakes up in the hospital, and her mother reassures the girl that her brother will be alright, but Asha feels guilty. This never would have happened if she hadn't asked him to help, but then her mom notices she started bleeding again. The woman goes off to find someone to change the sheets, and before she leaves, she tells Asha a psychiatrist has been appointed to meet her. The grown-ups think the girl has mental problems, and she insists the Grim Cuddy attacked her, but the woman doesn't believe her, walking out of the room to get something to clean her wound. Overwhelmed with guilt, the girl apologizes to her brother when she notices his laptop on the bedside table. She walks 
walks over to see what he discovered and finds a picture listing the blogger's address. Asha is determined to get answers and quickly changes clothes, hoping to find the woman that discovered this challenge. Leaving the room with her mom's keys, the girl notices that Cassidy's parents are here and realizes their daughter has been hospitalized. Asha visits her friend and the girl explains her parents freaked out when they saw the video at the party. They sent her to a room where she got attacked by the Grim Cuddy and now is too injured to help the investigation. It's terrifying, but Asha reveals she knows where the blogger lives and has a theory for why the kids are getting attacked. The Grim Cuddy only hurts people after their parents become hysterical or overprotective, and that could mean the parents in this community are controlling the Grim Cuddy. The more aggravated they become, the more dangerous the creature will be, and if they don't break the cycle, every kid in the neighborhood is going to die. Okay, this is terrifying. We can officially confirm that their parents are the reason an internet meme is trying to kill them, and they only became scared after some Karen on the internet made a blog post. The good news is that if Asha is correct, then we already have a few quick solutions that can be used to stop the Grim Cuddy from appearing. Now, our parents are summoning this thing whenever they get more scared, and the biggest contributor to their fear is by reading about the monster's victims. It's unlikely that we'd convince them to just stop paying attention to the news, so we need a different method to relieve them of their fear and help them relax. If they were me, whenever they appear to get triggered, I would try to calm them down by surprising them with a hug. To a parent, this can be extremely disarming, because it cuts right through to the reason they're trying to control us in the first place. A parent's natural desire is to protect their children because they love us, so by hugging them, it helps them quickly dissolve their fear for our safety. This one simple act of affection can stop the monster in its tracks, and if it has nothing to feed off of, we can force it to find another victim for the time being. Now with that said, we need to find the blogger as soon as possible and spending time with our parents is only going to get in the way of that. This woman might have answers that will help us beat the monster, but the problem is that as soon as Asha runs away, her parents are going to panic. There's no way we can stop them from getting worried, and that's why we need to do everything we can to limit their emotional reaction. The good news is that we're in a hospital, so there's going to be all kinds of medication stored in the building. It might be difficult to pull off, but we aren't the only people seeing the Grim Cutting. Families all over town are being attacked by the monster, and with so many kids being sent here, the doctors will be overwhelmed treating people. That gives us the opportunity to look for a tranquilizer, either from a supply room or a medical cart, and go back to our hospital bed. I would steal something commonly used for general anesthesia, such as propofol, and once I have the opportunity, jam a syringe into my parents. This should knock them out, and as soon as they are unconscious, we'll be safe from the Grim Cuddy appearing. It might be a long shot, but if this works, then we can leave the hospital and get the answers we need from the blogger. Meanwhile, the mother returns to the hospital room to find her daughter missing and notices the laptop has been left open. Taking a look, she figures out where the girl has gone and decides to follow after her, hoping to stop Asha before it's too late. Across town, the girl arrives at the blogger's house and goes up to ring the doorbell. That's when Melinda here opens the door and Asha asks her about the post she made on the Grim Cut, but the woman insists she has no idea what the girl is talking about. It's weird and Asha explains that this online challenge was even rumored to influence a kid to stab his own mom after seeing the creature. Reluctantly, the blogger reveals that there was a small incident, but insists it had nothing to do with the Grim Cuddy. Angry, the girl tells Melinda all the parents in town have been reading her blog, and shocked, the woman goes back inside, insisting the girl leave. With no leads, Asha is about to drive back to the hospital, but changes her mind, making a decision that will change her life forever. She goes back to the blogger's house to spy on the woman, and accidentally bumps into a trash can, but that's when the girl notices that inside are a bunch of damaged electronics. It's suspicious, and the girl sneaks into the house, walking up to a child's room where she finds chains on the door. Unlocking them, she enters the bedroom, but the girl finds no one there. Asha searches the room and finds another door, but when she opens it, Melinda's son falls out. The girl can't believe what she's seeing, and the boy insists she lock him back inside before his mom finds out, but it's too late. The blogger steps in the room, aiming a shotgun at the girl, and demands she surrender her phone. Reluctantly, Asha reveals it's already been locked away in a detox box, so the woman tells her to step out of the room, but they're interrupted by a car pulling up. Downstairs, Asha's mom has arrived at the house and rings the doorbell. The blogger greets her and leads the woman inside, explaining that Asha had broke in, so she was forced to trap her in one of the rooms. The mom apologizes for her daughter's behavior, and as soon as Asha is let out, she immediately tells her mom that Melinda has locked her own son upstairs. The girl begs her mother to help him, but she's had enough. Frustrated, the woman slaps her own daughter and takes the girl outside. Asha tries to explain that the Grim Cuddy is haunting the blogger's son and feeds off of parents' hysteria, but her mom refuses to listen. That's when she suddenly spots the creature in the rearview mirror and tells the woman to calm down, knowing that the Grim Cuddy will attack if she doesn't. 
but that was her biggest mistake. Her mom gets angrier, complaining about Asha's selfish behavior as the monster gets closer, but the woman suddenly smashes the window in frustration. The girl is shocked she hasn't died yet and checks the mirror, but finds no sign of the creature anywhere. It vanished exactly when Asha's mom calmed down, and the woman hands over her phone, telling her to stay here before returning to the house to get more answers. Okay, this is great news. Asha has finally confirmed that her parents are summoning the Grim Cutty, and all it took was the woman venting to make the monster disappear. The mother doesn't believe us yet, but the fact she's going back to find out more could mean she's also managed to break out of the hysteria that's controlling her. Up to this point, none of the parents have actually bothered considering if any of their children are telling the truth, and that means this one moment of violence was a major breakthrough. What's interesting is that on a biochemical level, acting out of frustration can have a very calming effect, because it produces a a lot of dopamine and endorphins, and has even been used in psychotherapy to help patients deal with anxiety and stress. In fact, Arthur Janov, the founder of this branch of therapy, would even encourage people to roll around on the floor, cry, suck their thumbs, and reenact any critical moments of their childhood, believing we could only resolve our pain by physically processing it. With this in mind, this provides us with a great way to protect ourselves from the Grim Cuddy when he's about to attack us. Instead of trying to calm our parents down, we should do the exact opposite and piss them off as much as humanly possible. As counterintuitive as it might seem, this will actually distract them from being worried about us because it completely stops their parental instincts and forces them to engage their fight-or-flight response. If our parents feel like they're being attacked in some way, then there's a stronger, more primitive instinct for self-survival that kicks in, and this is why the Grim Cuddy disappeared. If it were me, I would be cataloging every possible way I could stimulate this impulse on my parents to directly change their mood, and anytime the monster shows up, we can use the strategy to neutralize it instantly. Now, this isn't going to work as a long-term solution to get rid of the creature, but it's a very effective way to stop it from harming us when we're in a survival situation. We're still going to need to convince our parents of the truth about what's happening, but we'll have a much better chance of doing this when they're calm, and this is the first step in that direction. The mother confronts the blogger, asking if she's keeping her son locked up, and the woman insists the girl is lying, but the mom doesn't trust Melinda. Refusing to give up, she barges inside and asks the woman if she created the Grim Cutty, but Melinda makes it clear she's only trying to protect her son from harm. The mother demands to know more, but the blogger freaks out with no idea she's making things worse. Suddenly, they hear a scream from the second floor, and Asha's mother rushes upstairs in a panic. Barging into the boy's room, she's shocked to see him held up in the air by an invisible creature, and realizes that the Grim Cuddy has been real all along. That's when she hears the blogger load a shotgun and turns around to find the woman aiming it straight at her head. There's no escape, but then Asha walks into the house, distracting the blogger at the last second. Seizing her opportunity, the mother charges at Melinda and pushes her to the floor. She's just saved her daughter's life and they try to get out of there, but the woman stops them. The blogger makes it clear it's her responsibility to stop people from spreading information about the Grim Cuddy, but never notices her son walking out of his bedroom. Suddenly, he stabs her in the leg, and the woman turns around, shocked that he would attack his own mother, but quickly loses her balance and tumbles down the stairs before blacking out. The girl has managed to survive, but soon Asha will be fighting for her life against the Grim Cuddy. They head back to the hospital to get the blogger's son treated for his injuries, and Asha's mother tells her daughter to stay here while she talks with her dad. It's a heartfelt moment between them, as she finally understands what the girl is going through, but Asha will soon risk her life to reveal the horrifying truth. Meanwhile, in the hospital, room, Cameron wakes up to find his father searching through his laptop, and the man is furious. He's learned about everything the kid has been researching from his private computer, and that includes searching up the Grim Cuddy. The boy tries to defend himself, insisting he was just curious, but that's when the monster appears. The kid is terrified of what's going to happen to him, but then his father insists they need to go, with no idea his anger has made the creature more powerful. Outside in the waiting room, Asha finds a bunch of students in tears, and asks what's going on. Her friend explains that Cassidy was stabbed in the neck, and the doctors believe that she might not survive. The girl is horrified to hear that and walks away, overwhelmed by the damage the Grim Cuddy has done. In another part of the hospital, the mother reunites with the rest of the family, and the man asks her what happened, but the woman insists everything is okay. She approaches her husband, but then he notices that she's got a needle in her hand. The woman explains it's a muscle relaxant, and he needs to take it to help their kids, but the dad refuses, grabbing a hold of her just as the police show up. The man quickly takes the injector as his wife is dragged away for questioning, and to make matters worse, he realizes his son has just disappeared. 
Okay, the mother finally believes the Grim Cuddy is real, and she had a great idea to find muscle relaxants to give to her husband. It was also very smart that she chose not to mention that the Grim Cuddy monster is real, because it would just make her husband turn his hysteria against her. But she made one serious mistake. The biggest consideration here is that right now, adults are unable to see reason as long as they're acting out of anxiety or fear. So there's nothing we can say to help this guy understand that he's putting his own children in danger. That's why if I were the mother, I would have injected the syringe into his leg before he realized what was going on. Sometimes it's better to ask for forgiveness instead of permission. And if you know that your children's lives are at risk, it would have been the right thing to do. Now as for Cameron here, this kid actually made the best decision he could with the information he had available to him. At this point, he doesn't know everything that his sister knows, but we can see that he's clearly figured out the Grim Cuddy might be influenced by his father. First of all, the kid has only seen the monster twice, but on both of those occasions, his parents were extremely concerned about him. Secondly, we can see here that he never told his dad that there was a terrifying monster in the room with them. This means he didn't trust him enough to ask for his help, and that's why it was excellent thinking to escape the room as quickly as he could. Now, it might seem like a hopeless situation, but we're actually in a pretty good position right now, because if we already have an intuition that our parents' overprotective behavior is being influenced by the Grim Cutty, then we might be able to get them on our side by proving that this thing is here. As I pointed out before, we can clearly see that once this thing appears, it seems to be confined to its physical form and needs to chase us down. I would be running through the hospital grabbing every loose object I can and lead the creature into crowded areas of the building. I would then get everyone's attention and make them watch me as I throw objects at the monster. Everyone will be able to clearly see that they're bouncing off of something in thin air. And when we explain that there's a supernatural presence that's trying to kill us, they'll have no choice but to believe we aren't crazy. If we can make sure our father sees it too, then the creature will soon disappear and he'll finally be able to break through the hysteria when we explain that his anxiety is causing the grim to attack us. Meanwhile, Asha is still crying over her friend when she notices her brother heading up the stairs. The girl figures out he must be haunted and falls after him into the basement as he tries to find a way to escape. Terrified, the boy quickly heads back the other way when his sister grabs him and pulls her brother into a storage room. They're relieved to see each other, but he warns her their dad has been freaking out, and the girl realizes his panic has made the Grim Cuddy stronger than ever. He needs to be stopped, and Asha grabs a pair of scissors, knowing that if she can't kill the monster, the only option left is to take their father down. It's terrifying but the girl leaves the room, determined to put an end to this deadly internet meme. That's when the kid hears something growl behind him and realizes that the Grim Cuddy has just found his hiding spot. Suddenly, Asha hears her brother screaming, but before she can do anything to help, her dad spots her in the hallway. The girl quickly hides the scissors and begs her dad to calm down as the man walks towards her, but he refuses. The man is still angry at her brother and demands to know where he's hiding, but that's when Asha comes up with a clever idea. Acting quickly, the girl taunts him, telling the man she's stole her mom's phone to watch Grim Cuddy videos, and the father gets triggered. Suddenly, the monster lets go of the kid, and now it's coming after her. The plan is working, and she watches as her brother runs out of the storage room, relieved that he's survived. With no time to lose, she sprints down the hallway and heads to the boiler room, determined to finish the monster off. Looking around, the girl searches for the Grim Cuddy when it suddenly pops out of hiding and rushes at her. Asha stabs the creature several times, and it collapses to the floor, dropping its knife. The girl quickly tries to leave, but then she she hears the monster growl behind her. It's still alive, and Asha runs for the exit, finding her dad blocking the only way out. He begs her to let go of the scissors, but she refuses. It's the only thing protecting her, but that's when the monster attacks. The creature shoves her against a closet to murder the girl, and the dad runs over, terrified of what's happening to his daughter, but at the last second, she stabs him. The monster instantly vanishes, and the girl runs out of the boiler room, determined to take it down, but her father won't stop. He confronts her outside, wanting to know what's going on, when she's suddenly lifted into the air by the Grim Cuddy. It's undeniable proof that the monster is real, and realizing he was wrong, the man administers the muscle relaxant, saving his daughter's life. The creature lets go of Asha as the medicine begins to take effect, and the girl rushes over to her father's side. They've managed to beat the monster, and she decides to make a video warning others how to deal with the Grim Cuddy. It's been a terrifying experience, but with it, she's learned a valuable lesson. Your parents are wrong, even when they think they're right. But what do you think? How would you beat Grim Cuddy? Let me know with a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching. Give a like and subscribe. And check out the How to Be playlist for more videos like this. Until next time, have a damn good day.